Hello. Businesses obviously have growth as one of their objectives. Sometimes they grow with internal growth, that is organic growth. They take their profits, they save up their profits, and eventually they use their profits and maybe borrow from a bank to invest and grow. But other businesses use external growth, that is they merge or take over another business. That's external growth. Businesses that, that undergo external growth don't have to join up or merge with another business in the same industry at the same stage of production. They might take over a business that's in the same industry but at a, an earlier or a later stage of production. Or indeed they might take over a business in a completely unrelated industry to their own. These are different kinds of external growth and businesses do these different kinds of external growth for specific different objectives. In this video I want to go through uh, these types of growth so that you understand them and also most importantly to understand the different benefits or advantages that businesses hope to uh, realize by undertaking these different kinds of external growth. But first let's clarify what stages of production are. We divide businesses into uh, operating in one of three stages of production. The primary sector of the economy, the secondary sector of the economy, and the tertiary sector of the economy. I'm sure you know this already, but the primary sector is concerned with the extraction of raw materials. Mining, farming, um, fishing are examples of primary sector businesses. Secondary sector is manufacturing, making things, everything from baking bread to manufacturing cars is classified as secondary sector. And the tertiary sector is providing services. These might be services like financial services, educational services, healthcare services, but also, of course, retail services, shops selling goods manufactured in the secondary sector, but sold to consumers through shops operating in the tertiary sector. So supermarkets operate in the tertiary sector. Okay, let's identify four kinds then of business growth, that is external growth. These are four kinds of integration. There's horizontal integration, vertical backwards, vertical forwards, and conglomerate integration. As I go through each of these, I want to explain it to you, give you an example, and then focus on why, why businesses would do this. So, horizontal integration. Horizontal integration is when a business joins with another business, merges or takes over an, another business that is in the same industry and at the same stage of production. So, a supermarket chain buying another supermarket chain, or um, a car manufacturer, uh, Volkswagen, buying up another car manufacturer, um, Skoda, who they did buy some years ago, are examples of horizontal integration. Why do it? The benefits of doing this are to achieve economies of scale because now they are bigger. They are operating on a bigger scale so they can buy their raw materials and component parts more cheaply because they buy them in bulk. Also, it reduces competition. It reduces competition and uh, increases the concentration of the industry. Okay, which, which businesses will also benefit from um, as well. So this is why they might pursue horizontal integration. Okay, let me rub that out. Uh, I'm going to switch sides. Um, it might be easier for me to operate on this side. So, that's horizontal integration. All right. Now, backwards vertical. Backwards vertical integration. Um, let me just shift everything this way a little bit. Uh, this way. Uh, okay, backwards vertical integration is when a business... Um, joins with another business in the same industry, but at an earlier stage of production. So it might be a, a tertiary sector buying a secondary sector, or a secondary sector buying a primary sector. Let me give you an example. If a supermarket chain, which is tertiary sector, bought a food processing factory, which is secondary sector, that would be backwards vertical integration. Or if a manufacturer of, say, canned fish, um, bought a fleet of fishing ships, that would be secondary buying primary, it would be backwards vertical integration. Why do that? There are different objectives for doing backwards vertical integration. The main objective is guarantee a source of raw materials 
or components or goods. The supermarket that buys the food processor guarantees a source of food to be sold in the supermarket. The, uh, a car manufacturer, secondary sector, that buys a steel plant, making steel, um, would that be primary? Would that be hmm, something like that? They would be guaranteeing themselves a source of raw materials. You see that? Um, and, and of course, a, a, another benefit that comes from that is you can deny your competitors that source of raw materials. Okay, so it's not just that you get the guaranteed source of raw materials, but you can deny, make things a bit more difficult for your competitors by denying them now the chance, because you, you control this, this raw material company. You, you, won't let, you won't allow it to sell to your competitors. And another benefit from backwards vertical integration is the, is the, uh, the benefit, of course, of increased profit, because whereas previously the profit of the separate company had to be paid for, now, now it's, that's absorbed into this business, so there's more profit. So... They are the benefits of backwards vertical integration. Switching to forwards vertical integration, I'm sure you understand that forwards, forwards vertical integration is when a firm buys another firm at a later stage of production. So if a car manufacturer, uh, secondary sector, bought up a, a, a number of car showrooms where people go to buy a, a new car, um, that would be forwards vertical. Or if a film company, manufacturer of feature films, film production company bought um, a chain of cinemas, it would be forwards vertical integration. The main benefit of forward vertical integration is guaranteed outlet. A guaranteed outlet for your products. Um, and also you're closer to the customer now, so you can respond more to what customers want. Also you deny your competitors an outlet, and of course you boost your profit because you absorb the profit of, of what was previously a separate business that was the outlet of your, of your goods. Finally, conglomerate integration. Conglomerate integration. Conglomerate integration is when a business buys another business or merges with another business in a completely separate, unrelated market. So if a supermarket chain bought um, a chain of cinemas, if, if uh, a power company, an energy company, bought a film, a Hollywood film production company. I think that happened some time ago with a French energy company. They bought some, was it Universal Pictures? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, this would be, of course, a, completely a complete change of direction. Why on earth would they do this? Well, they do this for two main reasons. Firstly, it spreads risk. So that uh, now the business can survive if one of its interests, if one of those markets fails, um, it can survive on its other interests. So spreading of risk is a main benefit of doing conglomerate integration. Secondly, a spread of management ideas. Spreads ideas. Um, you get injections of new ideas across the different parts of the, of the parent company. And thirdly, there can even be cross subsidization. So the, the profits of one, the profits of one uh, successful area can help um, boost the other parts of the of the overall parent company um, and the profits of one part can be used to subsidize investment uh, in another part so if a successful supermarket company wanted to get into the music business um, of course it would have the profits of its supermarket uh, side of operations and the distribution network that it has through its supermarkets and its and its shops its supermarket shops uh, to, in order to uh, distribute and then sell the music that it starts to sell. And that would be, of course, uh, strange that supermarkets uh, could, could, could actually help in the music, with, the, with the music sales, but of course they've already got that network of distribution with lorries, uh, taking the CDs everywhere, and the shops where people can go and buy their music. So, so that would be an example of cross subsidization Okay, so clearly businesses can benefit in different ways from doing different kinds of external growth. And, and that's why the mergers and acquisitions are, are so important in our economy. Okay, hope that was of use to you. Um, looking forward to hearing your comments. And, uh, and um, there we are. I'll put some more vids up soon. Bye.